Look, there's no freezer, there's no fridge, there's no till, there's no microwave, there's no soft drink dispenser, and there's not a thing I can do about it. But I do not have to pay these. Look, what are you telling me for? It's got nothing to do with me. Look, Ali, what am I supposed to do? Eh? What am I supposed to uh, do? You can still do fry-ups. Oh, terrific. I can still do fry-ups. And for that privilege, I have to spend an extra £100 a month. And thank you so much for putting me so clearly in the picture when you sold it to Look, me. Look, you shouldn't have been so greedy. You should have asked the right questions at the right time. If you'd have been honest, I wouldn't have needed to ask any questions. You should have looked into things before you signed things over. Ah, oh, these mean nothing. I don't know. All right, then. If they don't mean nothing, I'll take it back. What? You heard. If you don't want them, I'll have the cap back. I'm not doing nothing. Hey, no way, mate. Now I've got this cap, I am going to keep it and I'm going to make a go of it. And while we're on this subject, I'd like you to know what I think you're lying, underhand, Wait, just shut your mouth, all right? Get out. Go on, just get out. I don't want you in here ever again. Well said. Terrific. It's all very well acting the hard man. What are we going to do, eh? Never mind. We'll manage. We'll have to do for the baby's sake. Yeah, well, uh, how about a cup of tea, eh? Sandwich, Brian? Pat's gone late night shopping and Frank's in a tears. He says, can you get over there now? Yeah, all right. When I finish my tea. So, uh, where's Sharon? Hi. Gone to see a man about double glazing. Hey? About selling double glazing over the phone. It's called cold calling or something. Oh, is she uh, looking for another job then? Hey? Is she leaving the Vic? No, no, it's just a part time thing, isn't it? Oh. Oh, Simon, look at that. Cindy, if Frank's pushing, you'll be getting back. I'll come over in a minute, all right? Oh, Simon. Cindy. Oh, I'm so miserable. Give us a cuddle. What's the matter with you? I'm gone for all time's sake. Cindy, eh? if you've got problems, you talk to Ian, not me, all right? Oh, sorry. Look, when I want your advice, I'll ask for it, all right? What was that all about? Oh, I don't know. She came over to tell me that Frank wanted me over the Vic and then she sat herself down on my knee. Oh. <laughs> Shell? Yeah. Are you sure there was no second post? Yes. Oh. You have a nice time with that done it tonight and make sure you behave yourself. Simon, don't. Don't what? Look, he's the first bloke I've liked in a long time. Just don't make a big thing of it, all right? Not all right. Simon. See you later. Thank See ya. Oh, no. Hmm? See you in the Vic, 12.30 sharp. You and Cindy. Oh, come on, Dad. Just get Tracy. She can cover for you. I can't. It's lunchtime rush. And if I ask Tracy, look, she's got a cover for me while I take you down to Gatwood. Ian, your dad's going halfway across the world. Anything could happen to him. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I mean. Well, you want to see him off? I'm, I'm taking him to the airport. Probably. Well, ask Tracy, shall I? I think so. Great, then. Right, I'll take it. That jig does work, then. Yeah, like a boy. See you later, son. See you later, Pop. Honestly, Ian. Like I said, yes, didn't I? Yeah, eventually. Oh. Cindy, I think we really need to sit down and have a proper talk at lunchtime, all right? Oh. Yes, Julie, what can I get you? Three cups of tea and three donuts to take away, please. Certainly. How's the salon going? Well, apart from a power failure, the plumber and the electrician have nearly done, and Paul stripped down the walls. The walls, I said. Did I open my mouth? No, but I'm beginning to realise what this place is like for gossip. Same as anywhere else. Gossip is human nature. Yes, and you should know. Anyway. The whole place will be ready in about ten days' time. All I need is staff. And can I get any? No. <gasps> oh, Ian, you're supposed to be your dad's farewell. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, Ian, stop it. Will you marry me? I've said I'd marry you, didn't I? So let's set a proper date then, a definite one. Ian. Look, while he's away in New Zealand, eh? Why not? Let me go. Just think about it. While he's away, we can do it with no fuss. Cindy, I want this baby to have a proper mum and dad, you know? I want everything to be legal. I want us to be married soon, you know? Get a place for our own. <coughs> Make the world a difference, you know? Would it? Yeah, well, of course it would. I mean, Cindy, I can't stand to see you this slow. I mean, look, I want us to be excited about this baby. I want us to enjoy it, you know? Go out and choose little baby clothes and pick names, you know? Ian, I can't. Why not? Something might go wrong. Oh, come on, Lola, what's going to go wrong? Well, my sister lost a baby at seven months. Look, that's just a chance in a million, isn't it? Look, Ian, I don't want to talk about the baby. I don't want to buy clothes or choose names or anything. And I don't want to fix a wedding day. Right, take your seats, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that, eh? What a fight. That's Cindy. Can you give my hand with the vegetables, please? Come on, Ian. Oh, come on. Oh, sorry about that. It's all right. I know how much you like the sound of money changing hands. Cindy, you didn't knock me a fright earlier, were you? Oh, I don't know that bad, do I? Oh, come on, love. You know what I mean. Look, I don't see why I should assume I'd be going with them. I haven't lived at home for ages, Ian. Yeah, I know, I know. It's... I just thought that... I know what you thought. Look, with your mum and dad moving away, I'll... I'll be all you've got left, dear. You don't know what a comfort that is to me. Yeah, so why wait? Hey, let's get married straight away. 
Well done, hold on a minute. Oh, come on, just think about it. It's the most logical thing we could do. Oh, charming. What? Well, me being a romantic fool, you know, thought I might get married for love and things. Not because it's logical. I might as well marry Mr. Spock. Oh, come on, love and don't. I'll be back in a second, all right? Oh. Yes, mate. Oh, see you later. Hi, Sue. Hi, Kath. Yeah. Is that right you're closing your stall down? Oh, I've been talking to the human final facts again, I see. Oh, it's like that, is it? Look, I know he's your son, Kath, but he can be a real pain sometimes. Yeah, well, sad or not, he's a fella, isn't he? <laughs> All he ever cares about is his precious business. It's worse now that Kath's doing so well. Well, have you ever thought that he might be working this hard for you and the baby? You're starting to sound just like him. Oh, come on, Cindy, you shouldn't let it get to you. Let it get to me? That's a joke. Do you know the first thing he says to me every morning? Good morning, darling. Did you sleep well? No, it's guess how much we took in the cafe last night. I might as well move to Devon for the notes he takes of me. You can't do that. What about the baby? Oh, yes, mustn't forget the baby. Look, Cindy, I know this might sound like a silly question, but you do want this baby, don't you? I don't like a lot much choice, does it? Look, I know what it's like to carry children. I didn't want for nine months. I wouldn't like to see it happen to anyone else. So what are you saying? I get rid of it? No, that's not what I'm saying. It's my grandchild, remember? That's the last thing I want. So what then? I don't know exactly. But I do know that you can't just patch things up and hope everything's going to turn out all right. If you and Ian are having problems, then you're going to have to sort them out once and for all. Easier said than done, Kat. Nobody said it was easy. But you can't carry on like this, can you? You're going to have to decide what you want to do, Cindy, and either marry the boy or finish with it. Vic! Cindy! Phone! Right, come in. Hello. Sorry. Honeymoon. Julie, do you want a drink? Uh, oh, no, thanks, Mummy. No, yeah, Julie, my doll, how's business, love? Oh, it's great, Frank. No, oh, true. We don't worry, mind. Have a drink really, will you? Oh, all right. But I never ordered any brochures. Oh. Oh, Ian Beale. Well, can't you just send them straight to him? Oh, that's nice of him. Come in, Wixie, let me in. <coughs> oh, hi, Cindy. Look, why don't you get dressed and come out and have a decent breakfast, eh? I'll take you over the car, like if you want. Ask things, then. Still on the same shift, no, Mike. No, no, no. Get it over. I've got to get it over with. Shift? Oh, you better ask Simon, love us. He's development now. Do you think I should go and see Arthur as well? No, I'd leave him for a couple of days if I were you. Let him cool down. I'd go see Marie, though. She's probably in the right state of shock. Oh, she'll think I'm a right, Wally. Oh, Wicked. Oh, here, if anybody wants to know why you're late, tell him it's my fault, OK? Welcome home, Cindy. Oh, sorry, love. Do you have a nice time? Mum and Dad's settling in all right, are they? Yeah, fine. They've found somewhere to live now. It's a bungalow in between the sea and the moors. Oh, but Ian's glad to have you back. Well, I haven't seen him yet. Came in late last night, no sign of him. I thought they'd meet me at the station. Oh, it's all been happening here, kid. Oh, my sainted aunt, the kid. Is Janine all right, Mum? Ask her what she wants for breakfast. So where is he? What? Oh, well, you better go over the cab, love. I'd have thought you'd gone there before coming here. Did you? Oh, don't be so touchy. I thought you already done your call. But she said to me it's a bit mopey, a bit spiteful for the other kids. Oh, never rains, but it's cool. Thank God it's Simon and Sharon. I hope it's so well now. Oh, forgive me. Don't be busy. Get on it. Give us a smile. Ian, I'm not in the mood. All right, I'll keep my surprise nice. Stop it. Oh, it's brilliant. It makes me feel really good, Beth. Yeah, love, what can I do for you? Just having a quiet chat, know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I just want to know where I stand. How do you mean? Well, it's like I'm back and no one seems to care I'm here or not. I mean, am I still full time? When's Sharon going back part time? What's happening, Pat? It's nothing to do with me, love. Oh, thanks very much. Cindy, I don't know why you're so bothered. Your condition you'd be better off part time anyway. Stop denying it, have you? Talk it over there, and that's fine. Going. Mm. Right, Cindy, come on. Sit down. Right, yours truly has got something very important to say to you, so listen carefully. Yeah, well, I'll be still because I had one head of a day. Look, I've decided you and me's been messing around long enough, so I've been down to the registry office to check it out. They can fit us in the week after next. Well, hold on, don't I ever say this? Well, Cindy, I'm asking you now. We can't go on the way we are. No, Ian, I've got enough time to think about it. Back Yeah, option O. Well, what about option A, B, and C? What did you use on it? Very funny. No, I like it. I had mine like that when I was at school. Hey, Rod, how about you in the Queen Vic talent night? You've had a guitar. No. To the countryside, are you? No. 
Because if you are, it looks like you had any balls. How long did it take you to work that one out then, eh, Ellie? Don't let them get to you, Cindy. Well, they're just so childish, they drive me mad. Ali? Oh, just come in, Lauren. You're supposed to be there half an hour ago, and I've got better things to do with my time than hang around waiting for you. I'm sorry, I just lost track of time. You've been a naughty boy then, have we, Ali? Just keep out of it, all right? Ali, I'm still waiting. Right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Here, I'm coming. What? Spoken to Ellie on that. Yeah, well, he's lucky that's all he did get after the way he's been going on. He's a customer. He can go on any way he likes, OK? Cindy, oh, I like your new hairstyle. Careful, talk. Oh, it brightens the place up a bit. I don't want to talk you about know, it, I'd right? I'd have to go myself. You know, if I was a bit younger, mind you, I don't think I'd go for that exact shape. Why don't you just shut up, you interfering old cow? What? What did you call me? I called you an interfering old cow. I'm not interested in your opinions. No one is. So why don't you just shut up, eh, and do us all a favour? Here, yeah, did you hear what she called me? Dot, she didn't mean it, love. Yeah, but what are you going to do? I'm just going to be upset. Well, Cindy, all. Mum, I'll sort this out, Dot. I'm very sorry it won't happen again. Well, Cindy, I've never been called that in my life before. Well, she didn't mean it, Well, Dot. it sounded like it to me. Come on, Dot, we'll take you oh, home. Oh, I say, all oh, right. What's your game? Look, I lost my temper. She was gunning about my hair. You know she's what she's like. She's a customer, like. same as Ali. Look, I've had a bad day. I'll be all right tomorrow, OK? Well, we won't be able to find out, will we, Cindy? Of course that mean? It means this is the last straw and I've had it up to here with you, OK? Simon, don't be too hard. Now, she had to put up with a lot in Well, here. it ain't good enough, Mum. You didn't hear people going on about her hair. I don't care what they go on about. It's all part of your job, isn't it? If a customer makes a joke, you laugh at them. You don't scream at them. Look, it won't happen again, all right? Well, it's too late, Cindy. You're sacked. I love you, whatever colour your hair is. Yeah, but how could it do that to me? Just get rid of me like that. Oh, look, don't worry about him. I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about my job. See, you don't need the job. Well, how do you work that out, then? One, you don't need the money now. Cafe's open 24 hours. And two, if you want to keep your hand, then come and work here. We could always do with an extra pair of hands. Well, what if I don't want to work for you? Cindy, we're supposed to be a partnership. Which is why I don't want to be your skivvy, Ian. It won't be like that. I like working in the pub. Yeah, but you wouldn't have been out of work there much longer, would you? Think of the baby, eh? Oh, he's stuck at home changing nappies. Oh, don't start all that again. Cindy, have you decided about the wedding yet? Oh, come on, love. Look, if there's a problem, can you let me know so I can get it sorted and I can go down and I can give you a check? Oh, so that's the reason why, is it? So you can write out a cheque. Or perhaps if we're lucky, we can get some tax relief on it. Nothing at all. Come on, you lovebirds, break it up. Hey! <laughs> hey, Dad, you should call me from the airport. I come and got you. Oh, you look great. Well, I want to give you a surprise, didn't I? All oh. right, Wynn. Yeah, Hi. come on, Cindy. Hi. Give us a kiss for Granddad, eh? Well, I know you wanted to see me, but no need to do your hair specially. But, Dad, how was it? Was it good? Ah, it was brilliant, son. We don't know what we're missing living in Walbury, but I've got pictures of everything, haven't I? The volcanic plateau, the geezers at Rotorua, and I've got some blinding smudges of all that boiling mud. Oh, I can't yes. wait. 800 slides. 800? Yeah, you can see them, so I'll set up the projector. Oh, great. Yeah, you've got to go, son. Take you in the nipper. Kenny said you'll be welcome at any time. Yeah, by the way, I forgot. That's for you. Oh, thanks, Dad. Cheers, cheers. Yeah. Thanks. And there's a letter in there from Elizabeth. Oh, Don't right. Cindy see it. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Yeah, Cindy, that's for you. Additional Maori. Oh, thanks, Pete. Yeah, look. I know it's a bit previous, but I couldn't resist it, though, could I? Well, you know what it's like. For the nipper. Oh, dang. Hope to see you later. What's up with her? Simon's just sacked her from the Vic and she's taking it badly. What happened? It's a long story, Dad. Yeah, that's the point. Have you seen Uncle like Arthur? I haven't seen your mum yet. You're my first stop. So you haven't heard then? What? Aren't you poor? Any for them? What? You look too many miles away. No, no, I'm fine. Look, here's your tea. Thanks. Come on, drink up. I'll close in your head. Ah, there's my new microwave. Thank you. There you go, Dot. Anything? What's that, mate? Nothing. What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, everything. It's your dad, if you must know. Well, if he said anything to upset you. Honestly, and if he pats my belly once more and calls it Junior, I swear I'll kill him. Well, if you want, I'll, I'll go have a word with him, all right? Yeah, well, please do. Well, he's just chuffed as a big grain, Dad, that's all. Yeah, but he shouldn't count his chickens. What do you mean? Well, nothing certainly, and not till it's born. <laughs> Not. That nearly gave me an heart attack. Well, I'm sorry, I did knock. I was just wondering if you had time for a chat. I'm a bit busy, actually. Oh, well, I was at the sun. They said you won't start until ten this week. Well, that's so I can work on the house and look after the kids. Oh, just ten minutes or so. Look, Cindy, I want this place looking spotless for when Mum gets back. This is the only time I've got to do it. So can we do it another time? Yeah, dinner time, maybe. Ten minutes. 
It's a bit down. I didn't expect to see you in here so soon. Didn't you? You all right? Yeah, fine. No hard feelings? None at all. Good girl. Here's one another drink. Right, thanks. Simon. Yeah? It's not important. I'll tell you later. Oh, you could do with something to eat. No, Tom. Look, Cindy, I, I know you fell out with Simon. It's none of my business. It's between the two of you, but you're not all right, are you? What's the matter? I'm just missing my mum and dad. Is that all? Men. Why is it they get all the pleasure and all we get is to pick up the pieces? <laughs> if I knew the answer to that, darling, I'd write a book and retire on the profits. Look, you can tell me to mind me own, but I've got to say, Ian's one of the best. Well, second only to Simon, of course. I suppose a mum would say that. He'll make a great daddy, and will Believe me. I don't know. You can put up with all this, honestly. Or down, or this way, or that way. Oh, it's never like this in my work. Just a little. What's wrong then? Oh, but here, I'm in here. Come on, Cindy, well, it's me, Kathy. I just feel inside out. Do you remember how you and your mum looked hard when I first left there? Oh, what was it you used to say to me then? It's no use bottom all up inside. Stretch sideways. It was that night I remember when the two of you sat with me almost to the Milton Dolly Browns. All I did was talk and talk. Do you remember that? Yeah. So? Well, it's no use, Marge. We're just gonna have to go. I always used to think of myself as someone who knew what she wanted, knew what she was doing. I knew I was. Not like her. I knew what I wanted. You're still that same person. I used to look at other girls making fools of themselves over blokes or money or something and think, no way, not me. I'm in control. Then what do I do? I try and get myself in the club. At least you're not on your own. Yeah, at least I'm not on your own. Yeah, look. Please, if Mr. Oppertop, oh, if he come in, will you please tell him I've got a terrible headache? I've had to go home. Thanks ever so much. Well, this baby of yours, I mean, it's got a dad as well as a mum, hasn't it? Yeah, but it wasn't an immaculate conception, that's for sure. Look, Cindy, I, I know men don't feel the same as we do about babies, but it's not their fault. I mean, they don't have them grand side them like we do, do they? They have got feelings, though. And I think if a woman's feeling a bit down or a bit depressed, the first person she should talk to is the baby's father. Talk to him. Simon, please. I've already told you, Cindy, I'm working. Yes, I know you're working, but there's something I've got to talk to you. Look, Cindy, I'm sorry I gave you the sack, I really am. But it's for the best, isn't it? It weren't no good you working here with me in charge. And you'd have to give up sometime anyway. And remember what we said this lunchtime? No hard feelings. The thing is... I'm sorry, Cindy, my mind's made up. You can't have your job back. I don't want my job back. Hey? Okay. Shannon's welcome to my poxy job. So what's all this about? That's what I've been trying to tell you. Look, Simon. Yes, I don't Look, I found some stuff we might be able to do. Oh. All right, Cindy. No, I think that place is. I couldn't find what I was looking for. Good off. Yeah, we'll go on, don't we? Mum, yeah? Who served the answer to that for a fact? How many pairs of hands do you think I've got? I'm gasping. <laughs> With me, it's more of a sort of wheeze. Sorry, can I have a word, mate? I'm busy. Yeah, no, it won't take a minute. Do you want a drink? Well, if I show you won't get a talk to you, yeah. Yeah, well, I was born with one of these demands, weren't I? It's a bit late to change your habit of lifetime this stage of the game. But it isn't what? a game, Mally. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Sharon, come Saturday. I'll be out on the street anyway. Look, even if this does come up, I still won't be anywhere near the 900 quid I owe. So what's the point? Well, the point is, look at me. I ain't been to a few months, have I? October 12th. Yeah? It's state, I've got books. For what? <laughs> but you playing silly beggars on purpose. Ian, I don't know what you're talking about, honest. What do you think? The wedding, you numbskull. All right. Congratulations. Save him. Cindy ain't agreed yet. <laughs> Why? You tell me. I mean, Si, you worked with her, didn't you? I mean, you even went out of her a few times. Well, so did Arthur Square, Ian. No, I didn't mean it like that. No, that was before. I mean, now she wouldn't even look at another fella, would she? Well, if she did, you think she'd tell you? What, what are you getting at? Nothing, Ian. I'm just winding you up, this all. Yeah, then what's the matter with her? But Ian, I don't understand women any more than you do. But let's look at it from her point of view, shall we? It has to be the most important decision she's ever had to make in her life. And you've got to remember she's a Catholic. I take it dead serious, that one. Yeah, but Simon, she's carrying my child. And she ain't in no hurry. It's got to mean something's up. Well, now you're being stupid. Yeah, I know, but if something is up, then she should tell me, shouldn't she? And where's that going to get you? But if she don't give a toss, how much you can do about it? Don't kid yourself. A couple of minutes, you said. I'm sorry, I got talking, didn't I? Well, I'm trying to pick some pieces you couldn't live without. Oh, I completely forgot. 
So now you've got to nip out again. Oh, that's all right. Rod can do it when he arrives. Yeah, I'm glad you said when. He's already ten minutes late. I suppose he got talking as well. If you must know, I popped into the Vic. We'll have a word with Simon. All right? Simon? Yeah. Ask him if he'd be our best man. You did what? You in favour of Ethel and Reggie. Yeah. Well done, Ethel. And let's hear it for Julie. Yeah. And finally, let's hear it for Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose you thought that was funny. Never mind about all that, Don. I've got some news to you. We can go ahead and complete. The orbital's not coming through here after all. Hey? We get our finger out. We can be in the B and B by the end of next week. I love you. So, two entirely different acts, but unfortunately we can only have the one winner. So let's hear it once again for the lovely Julie! <laughs> and the apple of every mother's eye, Trevor Trevor! Okay, in the twelfth it is. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Queen Vic Talent Night is the lovely... Julie Cooper! Yeah, sit yourself down, I'll bring it across, won't I? Soup and special, please, love. Uh, do you mind hey? leaving that thing outside? Well, I only want two teas to take away. I don't care if you only want a sauce or a milk. Dogs are unhygienic. They're starting to close cuffs down that can't get their act together, you know. Yeah, I'll do your teas for you, Trevor, right, mate? Yeah, and while he's doing that, that thing can wait outside. You never seem to mind Ethel's willy. Who's running this cuff? You or me? Come on, Roly. It's a bit over the top, isn't it? No. Two more teas, please, Ian. Yeah, come out, mate. Oh, you're set for the wedding then? Yeah, we're getting there. Do you need any help? Not really. Well, a spare pair of hands when we don't miss the reception, you know. Ian, you're hardly catering for the 5,000. That flat's overcrowded with just the three of us. It'd be nice to see Auntie Paulin again, won't it? Yeah, it will. I told her not, not to bother, but you know what she's like. Well, when are they coming back? Tomorrow? No, Uncle Arthur's coming back today, you know, get things sorted out. I've got to pick him up from the coach station in a couple of hours. Auntie Paulin's coming back Thursday morning. There you go. Yeah. No dog. Sorry about that, Trevor. You don't have to apologise, Ian. Anyone with half a brain would know not to bring a dog in here, and there's your something special. What are you trading around it for, anyway? Well, there's been some very strange noises at Mrs Moe's house, and Roly, don't half panic. It's not right to leave them there threatening. <sighs> right, what do you want, Mum? Well, I'm here you are. They're looking for you. Here you are. Well, no one's run off with me store, are they? No. Do you fancy popping over the road for a bite to eat? Well, I'm just going to get something sweet in here. Oh, come on. Oh, all right, then. I'll see you later, Ian. Bye. Yeah, tell Mum. Oh, terrific. Not only does he pinch me mum, he now pinches me trade. Yeah, are you going to have a stag night? Depends. Yeah, go on, have a stag night. I'm going to have one when I get married. Oh, anybody we know? God, I haven't invented it yet. Do you want anything else, Trevor? Yeah, I just want to pay. Uh, 60p, please, mate. Yeah, but you've got to have a stag night, haven't you? Yeah, oh, no, I was probably going for a drink or something, something you know? Uh, what about you, Cindy? You're going to have a duck night? A what? You know, one of them uh, women's nights. What, what are they called? Trevor, end nights. <sighs> Oh, Rod did the playground shift. Yeah, he normally does. Um, I've given him some time off so him and Hazel can see the brewery people about the Dagmar pitch. Simon! Here. 12 o'clock. What's that? The wedding, remember? Best man? Look, I know it's a little bit late in the day, but I finally got around to telling you the time. Yeah, well, uh, here, Simon. Simon. There's people here dying at first, you know. Oh, yeah, look, I'll have to square it with Frank first and I'll give you a ring later, OK? Yeah. What are you doing with your hair? No one thought. Well, if you don't want it red again. Come to me Thursday morning. I'll do your hair for a wedding present, make you look a million dollars. All right, you, not Marie. Me, not Marie. <laughs> all right, thanks. So what about this hen night, then? Well, all right, then, tomorrow night? Yeah, yeah. OK. You fit? What for? All right, I'm finished. Right, OK, I'll see you tomorrow night, then. Yeah, OK, thanks. 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 Thursday. Oh. Oh, come on, love. Hey, cheer up, will you? Everything's going to be all right, I promise you. You've got nothing to worry about. You really do care about me, don't you? I wouldn't be marrying you otherwise, would I? Come here. <sighs> Sometimes I wish things were different. What, but you weren't pregnant? Yeah, but I am. And that's all there is to it. Wonderful. If anything like I was, you'd be a nervous wreck by now. Was he? Lofty. Yeah, I think so. You never really knew him, did you? No, what was he like? No, he was sweet. Um, tea bags. Over there. So all he ever wanted to do was look after me and Vicky. You know what you said about the other day, about only fancying blokes that treat you like dirt? Did I say that? Is that why you and Lofty never made it, because he was so sweet? No. Well, why then? It was a bit more complicated than that. Yeah, but you said... I know, but I don't have all the answers. Oh, I'm sorry. Look. 
me and Lofty, we were just a couple of kids, brought up on promises of instant happiness as soon as we got married, had kids in a place of our own. I mean, we were just doing what we thought we were supposed to do, that's all. And then? And then we realised the promises weren't true and that life's not really like that. Do you think things would have been different if Lofty had been Vicky's dad? No, I, I don't know if I ever really loved him, you know? Is that why you never... What? Turned up the first time? Look, I knew that I'd hurt him eventually, and I didn't want that. So why go through it all again, then? Oh, well, if I had the answer to that, I'd have the answer to everything. Look, you don't have to worry. I mean, you're with someone that you really love. You don't have to pretend or weigh up being true to yourself against hurting other people. And that you do what I could never do. What's that? Share Vicky with her real dad. You sure, Cindy, don't mind me going? No, why should you? Well, we ain't exactly been what you call close, have well, we? Well, I want you there, right? Besides, Ian's the one who invited you. Are they going away? Um, no, I don't think Ian's had a spare the time. Mind you, I think they'll try and grab a couple of days off next week. Yeah, not much of a honeymoon, though, is it? Well, you know what he's like. Oh, now, we're only going 200 yards. Yeah, well, you've still got to pack it properly. Yes, but you've still got to unpack it at the other end, love. Well, what's the point of putting it all in cases? You know, it's funny you being in the best man. What? Well, I used to think she was after you. Yeah, well, that was ages ago, though, wasn't it? Well, you know, when we were all working together. You know, whatever give you that idea? A woman knows these things. Oh, she does, does she? <laughs> I got it! Queen Vic. Hello, Auntie Paulie. Right, Rod. All right, Miss. Ian. I've just had your Auntie Paulie on the phone. Oh, right, she won't pick it up from the station? No, she's not coming. A train's been cancelled or something. She can't get up until three o'clock. Oh, but that's not good. She's in the Mr. Wedding. I know. Um. Well, what's the time? Can't we go down and pick her up? What's yeah, that? You've got the time here. Look, she's at Auntie Betty's. I said you'd give her a ring. Yeah, right. All right, well, I'd better get off to the pub. Uh, Ian, I've got to pick up your suit and I. I'll see you later. Yeah, right. Cheers, son. Thanks, mate. So, are you all set for the big day? As ready as I'll ever be? I'll tell you what, love. I've done a few brides and I must say, you're not the most enthusiastic I've ever seen. I don't know what you mean. Well, they're usually either giggling or telling me how much they love their intended. Yeah, well, I've never been one for giggling myself. I see. Look, if it makes you feel any better, I love him and I can't wait to marry him. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were trying to convince yourself. Like, if you say it enough times, you might start believing it. I don't have to convince myself of anything. Please do hear it, love. How are we doing? Won't we'll be long now. Listen, everything's organised. Can pick the flowers up on the way home. OK, Tom. Look, Sheila, I know I, I know I gave you the day off, but do you think we could just check under the dryers for me? Marie waits until she sees smoke coming out before yes. she lets anyone know. There she is, the blushing bride. Hello, Doc. Yeah, well, I just popped in to wish you all the best. You know, I can't stop because I was spending a delivery, dry cleaning, you know, and if I'm not there to check the garments off against the tickets, I get into a mess. Well, it was nice of you to come, Doc. Yes, yeah, so I was given to understand by Ian, you know, your intended, as it were, you know, you ain't having a wedding reception as such where people can come and convey their best wishes, and I bought you a little something. Oh, Doc, you shouldn't have. Yes, yeah, well, well, as I was saying, I know it ends strictly protocol, you know, to be bringing your gift while you're having your hair done, but as I said, you know, you ain't never wedding reception, are you? No. Ian said just close friends and family, and of course, mm. if you haven't been invited, you know, it's a bit difficult to know where to bring your gift. Well, you're welcome to come if you want, Doc. Oh, are you sure? I wouldn't want to intrude. Oh, well, I better have this back then, because I wouldn't want to come empty handed. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, Pauline, stop worrying, will ya? Yeah, look, these things happen, don't they? Yeah, it's more important for you to take care of yourself. Listen, listen, Auntie Pauline, listen. Look, when you get back, me and Cindy are going to take you out for a drink, all right? Yeah, I promise, all right? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so see you when you get back, all right? Bye. Oh, Mum, Auntie Pauline can't make it. I know, I've just seen Simon with Arthur. Have you spoken to her? Yeah, she was talking about getting a taxi up or something. Well, from me on sea, it cost a fortune. Yeah, don't worry, I talked her out of it. Oh, it's probably for the best. Look, shouldn't you be getting ready or something? Mum, I haven't got time. I've got to get this lot finished and packed up, haven't I? You can give me a handkerchief. Well, for ten minutes, no more. I've got to get ready myself yet. What do you want me to do? Right, if you get a uh, clean film this up and start putting them in the boxes. Right, right nobody panic. Yeah, but Doc's lost your suit. What? Well, she hasn't exactly lost it, but it ain't come back or something. Oh, no, Mum, what am I going to do? Well, ain't you got another one? No. You could borrow mine, but I'm wearing it, ain't I? Don't look at me. Well, you're going to have to do something. We ain't got long. Does anyone here know anything about the supernatural? Uh, well, maybe Doc's got some of Charlie's gear in her wardrobe. Sight. Only that I think I've been having an experience. Eh? Well, I've been hearing those things again. Things? Yeah, you know. Things. Oh. Things. But, Ian, what do you want me to do? Um, well, once we've got this lot packed up, if you could take a moment to the flat, um, Michelle's over there with Cindy, she'll give you a hand, all right? Well, wouldn't it be better if I stayed here? No, we can finish this off, can't we, Mum? Yeah, of course we can. Well, perhaps Pete should go. I mean, he'd know where to put everything, wouldn't he? Simon, Dad hasn't got a licence anymore, has he? Look, 
Um, I'll take the Jeep, right? Take that box. <laughs> You should have known you can't have the knees up without dot cotton. Oh, God, I dread to think what that present is. You know what um, Charlie bought that brain, don't you? No. You know those disgusting fluffy dice that you hang from the girl mirror? Oh, I can just see your Ian with a pair of fluffy dice in his Jeep, yeah. <laughs> Penny for him. No, I was just thinking what you said. What? Well, you're Ian. I suppose he's really, isn't he? Mine, I mean. Well, I should hope so. You're marrying him in a few hours' time. Yeah, but I've never heard it put like that before. Look, Cindy, I know I've said this before, but you could do a lot worse than Ian, believe me. Yeah. I suppose I'd better get a move on, actually. I've got to finish getting ready and check Vicky. Uh, what time should I picking this up? Quarter past one. Right. Fancy a drink? No, if I have any more tea, I'll be sick. Have you said anything about tea? Cindy. Hello, Simon. Uh, Ian gave me his key. I've got to drop this lot off. Over there will be all right. I'd better be getting back. Yeah. Of course, like a madhouse at the cafe. Food everywhere. I speak. Everything all right? Yeah. A bit nervous. Where's Shell? Oh, she's just slipped out to check on Vicky. Oh, right. Well, I'd better be getting back, eh? And wondering where I am. I'll see you later then. Good luck. Simon. Simon! Don't go! We could go away together now. Nobody would know. It's not too late. I've got to get back. Simon, you can't leave me like this. I'm having your baby, for oh, God's don't sake! Don't start all that again, Cindy. It ain't mine, and you know it. Feel it! Go on, just feel it! Is this what you frightened of before? It's your baby, Simon. Our baby! Cindy. Just look at me! Come on, look at me! Are you sure it's not yours, Simon? Are you absolutely sure? Because if you're not, think about what you're doing. Think about your baby. Think about what you're doing to me. You just can't what are do you this. Doing I don't care. I can't do this. I don't even know what I'm doing here. It was all a game before, and now it's real, and I'm frightened. Please, Sam, please. No, Cindy. I love Sharon. No, you don't. You can't do it. If you did, you wouldn't have done what you did with me. It was just one of those things. A mistake. It should never have happened. A mistake? And I've got to pay for it, I suppose. It's not like that. Well, what is it like, then? Just tell me, Simon, what am I supposed to do? Go on, tell me what am I supposed to do? I mean, just shrug my shoulders and say, it's just one of those things. What? I don't know what you want me to say. I want you to say, please, Cindy. I love you and everything will be all right and you'll look after me. I can't, Cindy. Simon! Simon! <laughs> oh, don't seem right, Sam, does it? Really? Auntie Pauline not being here. Oh, she'll be thinking of your love. You know she will. Yeah. Oh, just a minute, I won't be long. Oh, where have you been? No, we thought you'd got oh, lost. Sure, sure. No, I'll get hold up, that's all. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Sharon, yeah. Ian, yeah, can I have a word? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You all right, mate? Yeah, look, Ian, I don't let you down or nothing, but I don't really think I'm going through with this. I don't think it's such a... Come on, we'll be late. Oh, God, where's Dave? He's coming. Oh, look, right. come on, you two. Yeah, I'll see you later. Come on, Ian. Yeah. Yeah. Simon, look, what are you talking about? Look, I'm the one who's supposed to be nervous, not you. I'm getting married. Look, you'll do a good job. Don't worry about it, eh? Come on. Don't worry, Kat. Well, it's supposed to be late, isn't she? Yeah. OK, son? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I'm fine, Pops. Do you think I should go and have a look for him? No, no you better stay here. Hanging about's making me thirsty. Well, cheer up. Well, she's painting her toenails or something. Well, you know what women are like. Arthur's just slipped to the phone box in the corner. Cindy! Oh, sorry we're late. There was an accident. Oh, never mind. You're here. Where's Dad? Oh. I just want to use the phone. He'll be back in a minute. Well, oh, yeah. somebody better tell him she's here. Yeah, I'll do. All right. You right, love? Cindy? Yeah. You right? Fine. You had me worried there for a minute. I told him. Blimey. She got here just in time, didn't she? Well, that's my girl then, eh? Hey? I'm not your girl. Cindy. It's all right, son. It's all right. It's the girl's big day. She's bound to be nervous. You look really lovely, Cindy. Here, you're next, eh, son? You and Sharon? Yeah. You'll make a nice couple, just like these two. Um, uh, shouldn't someone go and get Arthur? He might uh, not know they're here. How will be here in a minute, Kat? Yeah, I thought Sharon was coming. No, she's coming on later. Well, this is it, son. You won't know what's this, you know. Not when you've got three mouths to feed. Yeah. 
Oh, come on, Cindy. You got a face like a wet weekend. Supposed to be a wedding, not a funeral. Are you sure you're all right, love? Look, maybe. Of course she is. You better be. You carry my little grandson in there, yeah. eh? Another little bill, Look, eh? Just get your hands off me and leave me alone, will you? We're ready for you now. Uh, yeah, we'll be right there. I'm sorry, but we can't wait. There's other people waiting. No, we're just coming, right? We're just coming. You do what you like. I don't have to put up with all this. Yeah, Dad. I'm sorry, but we really can't wait any longer. Dad! Dad! I don't know why I expected friend, but it certainly wasn't this. Oh, don't worry, Kath. It'll warm up in a minute. I hope you're all right. Someone better do something. This is awful. Maybe if Wixie did ease a bit, eh? Yeah, I'll have a word. No, I'll get it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Miss Simon. Simon, why don't you do something? Like what? Tell him someone's died. That'll cheer him up. Oh, oh, congratulations. Oh, here you are, Cindy. Best Hello, wishes. Hello, oh. Hello, dear. This oh, is you you do look happy, don't they? Yes, yes, so, oh, you do look happy, don't they? Oh, Kath, you must be ever so proud. And oh. Pete. Where's Pete? Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I could just have your attention for a moment, please. Oh, that's all. They must be waiting for us. Well, hold on a minute while we sit down. Yes. Yeah, well, as the best yes. man, it's, it's one of my duties to say a few words mm. and read the card, mm. so... I thought I'd start by reading the cards. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, we had a message from Auntie Paula, and she said that she's sorry she couldn't be with you, but she hopes you both have a lovely day. Have we missed anything? What do you mean? Oh, they don't look very happy, do they? Oh, they must be wore out. You know, all the excitement. Yes. Where's Pete? Yeah, well, um, I'm sure you'll all agree that um, Ian's a lucky fella. Yes, yes. And Cindy's a lovely girl. Yes, lovely. And um, we're sure that the uh, two of you... Yeah, will... you mean the three of them? <laughs> Yeah, that the three of you will both have a, a long and happy life together. Yeah. Uh, now, I'd like to call on Ian and Cindy to cut the cake. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. Now, smile. Maybe someone should go and try and find him. No. If I know Pete's probably best left alone. Ian's still furious. Of course he is. Your own dad not being at your wedding. Maybe we should just leave him alone so they can sort it out for themselves, eh? Yeah, that's probably best, come on. Have you thought any more about moving back into the flat once Mum and Frank are gone? Well, I'd have thought from what you'd seen today, Joe, it was a good idea not to rush things. Oh, come on, it's hardly rushing things. We've opened at the flat, haven't we? Oh, sorry, that was different. Why? Well, it just was. Oh. Look, I'm not saying that I'll never move in or, or that I won't stay with the new manager from time to time, but let's not rush it, eh? I suppose it'll be you two next, won't it? Oh, <laughs> listen, we're going to go now. Let them talk themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, we don't have to bother to see us out. We'll see you tomorrow. Ta-da. Take care. Oh, you'll be off the level, all right, won't you? Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Cheers, Eve. Cheers, Eve. Thank you. Bye, Cindy. Bye. Well, I hope you're pleased with yourself. Don't you start, Don't Ian. start after that, Foss. I mean, what do you think you're playing? Look, if you didn't want to marry me, why don't you just say so? Say put me through all that. Putting you through that? And what about me? Oh, yes, I forgot. Poor little hard done by Cindy. Don't you dare talk to me like that, Ian. Talk to you like what? I mean, Cindy, what are you playing at? I mean, you've got a baby on the way, you've got a husband now and a home. I mean, most girls would give their right arm for that. But not you, no, no. You've got to play the martyr, haven't you? You've got to sit there and sulk. Well, oh, this is hard done by Cindy. Well, you didn't have to go through with it, you know. You could have gone on after your dad. Yeah, well, I wish I had now. Well, why don't you then go and go and find your precious father? Oh, I will. <laughs> Sorry, Cindy, shall we? Yes, Trevor, come on. Look, I'm really sorry, Cindy. We're both sorry. 